Dr. Sunidi Solomon, who's the director of YRG Care in India. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. So there's been a lot of talk here in Vienna about funding, concerns over funding for HIV treatment, prevention. What are your thoughts on the state of funding currently? I think we shouldn't be complaining about funding. You know, we always find an excuse not to do something. So it's been my last 22 years working in this field. It's always lack of funding. Those days we got $100,000. Today we get $1 million and still it's not enough. So I think we need to make the best of it. Now, are we going to use in prevention or treatment? I don't think you can divide. Prevention and treatment go hand in hand. I've been telling this right from the beginning. You do prevention and then someone comes up and says, I have infection, I need treatment. I cannot tell them, go away, find another place. So that is how we integrated prevention and treatment in us. And today, I think from HIV, we are trying to mainstream it into the general infections so that HIV becomes an everyday uh, project for everyone. Now you mentioned the integration of care. This is a big part of President Barack Obama's Global Health Initiative. This is something that you have lived out on the ground. So how does that actually work when you deal with patients who clearly are um, have other issues besides HIV? Uh, for example, we've started a clinic which we just call a general clinic and we have people with dengue and um, H1N1 walking in there for treatment. At the same time, we also have an, a voluntary counseling testing for HIV so that people walk in and they say, okay, one of, we have some infection. and. I think that's the only way you can get rid of that stigma as well. When people who really need treatment come there and find that there are also people with HIV there. And uh, for example, mother and child uh, maternity hospitals. I, I'm sure we should not be isolating women who are HIV positive, deliver them separately compared to the others who are negative because at the, this point of time, some may be positive, negative. The next minute we don't don't know who's going to be what. So I think this is the only way to integrate and remove the stigma of HIV is to integrate and mainstream HIV infection into the general infections. There, it's widely recognized that HIV has been feminized certainly in Africa. What is it like in India? Is there a similar concern there? Yeah, when we first were looking for HIV in India, I said, oh my God, they have it in gay population. We don't have such people in India. This is 1986. But then we started looking for it in the sex workers because we knew they were at risk. And uh, we found six of them positive. That was the first infections in India. So after that, we have seen that it, uh, HIV has now gone into the general population from the six uh, sex workers it has gone into housewives the biggest problem today in India is marriage a risk if you get married you may pick up the virus because in India the culture is men before marriage or even after marriage can go out to multiple partners it's okay it's okay with them because they are men Whereas women have to be virgins and continue to be faithful to their husbands. So the only way they pick up is through the husband. And 80% uh, of women, I'm ta I take care of roughly about 14,000 people with HIV, out of which I would say 7,000 may be women. And 80% of these women have a single partner and that's their husband. So uh, HIV has uh, definitely moved into the women and 40% of women in India who are HIV positive, uh, I mean 40% of people who are HIV positive in India are women. So do you have a reaction to the microbicide findings this week? I am thrilled with that finding, but I'm wondering, I think it would be so much easier to give a pill than use a gel. I don't know, because the uh, um, the content of tenofovir in the blood is high when they use this, so I'm sure we can use a pill, which is so much easier for women in India than use an applicator, and then we don't know what to do with the applicator, we don't know how far it goes in, how long it stays, whereas a pill can continue for 24 hours.
Last question for you. You participated in a global study of people living with HIV, the ATLAS study, and there were some interesting findings, even among people living with HIV, of stigma. So can you talk about those findings and how that relates to this conference theme of the importance of human rights in the battle against HIV? Yeah, the conference is right uh, here, right now. Rights here, right now. And uh, what we found in the study, uh, even in a country like North America, a person with HIV is lonely. He doesn't have someone he can turn to when he falls ill, which is very shocking to me. This is a common thing in Asia, where we have uh, surveyed Korea, and the survey in India is still on, so we don't have any results. But it shows very clearly 42% of people are very lonely, and they don't know how to disclose their status to anyone, and that's because of stigma and discrimination. So how do you fight that? How have you actually fought that on the ground? I think the only way to fight is to mainstream it. You know, earlier we used to say, okay, HIV is all by itself a vertical, uh, you know, uh, treatment. But if you make it horizontal, get HIV into mother and child, get HIV into general infections, get HIV into cardiovascular, because you know HIV does affect all the systems in your body. And so if we can get it into each of these systems, I think we may be trying to get over. But getting over stigma is not easy. Leprosy was 2,000 years old and still we have in India uh, stigma for leprosy. So this is just 30 years old. So we may have to wait for some. But I think we can with all the lessons we have learned from leprosy and smallpox and different things, we can help re uh, reduce the re uh, stigma in HIV. Dr. Solomon, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.